voulait vraiment savoir quest ce qui est arrivé au kibbutz, au festival israélien, pendant l'attaque du 7 octobre. Écoutez la vidéo. Donc c'est Scott Ritter, c'est un analyste et il était aux intelligences euh, américaines. Il connaît très beaucoup de gens en Israël, donc il sait de quoi il parle. Euh, il faut regarder la vidéo jusqu'à la fin et il va expliquer ce qui s'est passé euh, vraiment, qu'est-ce qui s'est passé là-bas. Allez, on va regarder ensemble. Et je lance la vidéo. He said there will be a Palestinian state. There has to be a Palestinian state. Hamas has already won the war because that's on the table, but now they have to follow through. Um, You know, and, and the other thing is, I don't think Hamas wants Hezbollah to intervene. I don't think Hamas triggered this to kill Israel. Hamas triggered this to get the Abrams Accord killed, but to get Israel to the negotiating table. Hamas is told, Iran, everybody's going, oh no, this was coordinated with Iran and uh, Hezbollah. No, it wasn't. Hezbollah and Iran didn't know anything about this. They were taken by surprise by this. And you can tell by the way they're reacting. Hamas has said to the Iranians, Don't intervene. We got this under control. We're not panicking. We know what we're doing. We're bringing them in, and then we're going to chew them up, and they're going to have to leave. They're going to leave because we're kicking their ass, and they're going to leave because the world is turning on them, and then the end result, we get a Palestinian state. But Hezbollah and Iran have you know, built up this whole notion that they are backing the Palestinian people, and now they're stuck. They're stuck with, in between a narrative. Because if they don't do something, they're seen as being weak. The Hamas becomes the heroes. They become lesser. It's a very, very dangerous situation. But if for a minute you think that Hamas is a terrorist organization and Israel is the aggrieved party, you know nothing about the history of this conflict. First of all, the Russian ambassador to the United Nations was 100% correct. Israel doesn't get to talk self-defense. You don't get to talk self-defense when you're the occupier. You don't get to say, I'm defending myself from the occupied. Whatever um, Israel is responding to that they're calling a threat, it can't derive from within the territory that's being occupied. The International Criminal Court, uh, the, ju the International Justice Court in 2004 made this very clear. Israel does not get to cite self-defense. They can't cite self-defense. They can't cite military necessity um, because they're the wrong, they're on the wrong side of history here. And, you know, we also have to be careful about all these allegations out there. You know, if you go back and study World War I, when the Germans marched through Belgium, uh, there was this whole thing of atrocity uh, propaganda taking place where, you know, the Germans were slitting open the bellies of the Belgian women, raping the Belgian nuns, so bayonetting the Belgian children. None of it was true. None of it was true. And now the Israelis are out there saying this, that, and the other thing happened. Uh, no, ladies and gentlemen, don't believe it. Wait, Scott, I've seen the building with the burned bodies. Yeah, but you know that that building was struck by tank fire, not, uh, you know, Hamas fire. That the head of security for the largest kibbutz, uh, Barry, I think it was, uh, has said that they, the, the Israeli IDF came in with tanks and was taking down the building, slaughtering our own people. There's a survivor who said, I was in a house with 20 Jewish hostages Eight Hamas guys, Hamas guys wanted to surrender. The Israelis hit us with tank fire, killing eight Hamas guys, 18 Jews, one Israeli survivor is wounded. I'm the only one who came out clean. This is the truth. Those, those, uh, kids that were out there in the rave, you know, I say kids, half of them were active duty Israeli defense force people out there partying. And the other half had just gotten out of the Israeli defense force. These are military age people. Many of them were armed. Um, There was a huge crossfire between Israeli security forces and Hamas. Right. I was going to say that. In the middle, and the vast majority of the people that died that day weren't killed by Hamas. So let's just let's just knock this crap off, okay? Israel right now is running a huge propaganda exercise, trying to win over the world, and it ain't working. It ain't working. Et en fait, j'ai toujours cru qu'il y avait une propagande qui n'était pas vraiment correcte, parce que quand tu vois que le Hamas a a pris 250 otages. Et qu'en fait, Israël, ils n'en ont rien à faire, quoi. Ils ont directement bombardé à fond, et jusque maintenant, ça fait déjà presque un mois qu'ils sont en train de bombarder. Ils s'en foutent complètement de leur peuple, même de leur propre tâche, quoi. Parce que si c'est un pays qui prend soin de son propre peuple, la première chose qu'ils auraient fait, comme tous les pays au monde, c'est d'abord négocier pour, la, pour libérer les otages. Ils auraient libéré les Palestiniens qui sont déjà emprisonnés depuis belle lurette, qui n'ont jamais rien fait, sans, sans aucun procès. 
on sait très très bien qu'Israël, ils n'en ont rien à faire de leur propre peuple. Quoi. Voilà, et ça c'est la vérité. Merci d'avoir regardé. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.